For my 2018 review, I've decided to upload it over four segments during the next couple of weeks. So, fast rewind to January, and it wasn't such a good start. The weather was terrible, freezing cold and hail and rain, and I had a chest infection which lasted for about eight weeks. But there was a few changes to the channel, none more noticeably than the intro. to wish all the subscribers a very happy new year and hope we have a good growing season. The sweet candle carrots had survived the snow and the cold weather and rewarded us with a few small but sometimes misshapen specimens. But the big question was, how would the Sarpalmeda main crop potatoes stand up to being in the ground since 2nd of May? That was the previous year. Still yet to get another one and a half beds of Sarpalmeda out. <laughs> <laughs> putting them back into the ground here, but I just tried a few and I'm still quite firm there's no sign of any uh, mushy or any slug damage or anything and uh, that's a job when the, I just want the soil to dry out a bit more it's still really wet and I don't want to tread on the beds this is what you call a bonus it's uh, cleaning the beds out there's a few leaks I'd left in which I thought the fly had cooled out of looking at the foliage near the top however I just pulled them out getting them a swill under the tap and as you can see, they were not too bad, so they'll be going in the stew pot as well. Taking a quick look at the weather for January, we start off with an average temperature for the whole month of around about 2 degrees. Very early into the month we hit a low of minus 3, and during the rest of the month we had another 4 nights of 0 or below. But in general the temperatures were above normal, with the warmest nights staying at 7 degrees. Moving on to the maximum day temperatures, surprisingly the monthly average is only 4 degrees above the average lows and that stands at 6 degrees. In general, daytime temperatures were way above average, reaching a high of 14 degrees towards the end of the month. Looking at the rainfall for the month, we had 11 dry days in total and the worst day saw 11 millimetres of rainfall and the total rainfall for the month was 68 millimetres. It's the 28th of January and the first seeds are about to go in. I've uh, got some uh, calcium seed here if you look on the packet. I'm selling them in these uh, 40 cell trays to start off with and uh, I've got a little mix here. This is the normal Levington's F2 plus S and I've also got a bit of vermiculite in, so I'll just get these underway. The calces are well underway now, openly germinating. Well, I've done another 40 cell tray and this time this one's called the uh, Robinson's Mammoth. This is the improved variety. And the seed actually arrives in this little plastic case here called the vial. So uh, that's another 40 in there. And uh, that's not the end, I have carried on. And uh, if you look down there, they've got the Wilco's. This is the Alsa Craig. And moving across, I've also got some uh, Bedfordshire Champion. I've sewn these into a better four inch pot and you might ask why I've done that as against the uh, cell trays well simply because I've got no more 40 cell trays um, it probably will mean that I'll have to prick these out a bit earlier as soon as I come to the crook stage where the onion bends the neck over I'll be putting those on hopefully that's if they germinate before we uh, finish on in here I have got another got three four packets of sweet peas different varieties there's beautiful bouquet sweet scented another bouquet one and also one called the floral tribute mixed uh, I'm not going to be sewing these separately what I'll do I'll just undo all the packet 
put all the seeds, mix them all up and put them into sour overnight and we'll get those in the pot tomorrow. I'll let these soak overnight and tomorrow hopefully we could put five or six into some cell trays we should have a nice mixed collection for planting out. Well it's the 1st of February and the rains come even stronger. <laughs> well, that ain't going to stop us. The plan for this morning I've got these, these are shallots. It's a variety I've not grown before, it's called uh, Red Sun and I'll be starting them off in 24 cell modules and I'll just leave them in the greenhouse to take over. It is just then a matter of barely resting them on top of the soil. Looks slight little press but nothing too much because at the end of the day we don't want to damage this what they call the basal plate which is what will prevent the bulb then from growing if that gets damaged. Well, we've had a real rare occurrence here and the sun has finally shown its face I think for the first time this year. Now anyway, looking down, just pop it down here, we can see the sweet peas which you put into soak. Looking at those quite a few have swollen, some of them have actually split which will obviously help germination. I've prepared two little cell trays here with 10 units in each and I'll probably put two to three seeds per cell in there and then plant them out as a block when they've germinated. We're going to continue on with the seed sowing and this morning we're going to be doing Zabrun shallots, which is the banana type, and also another banana shallot, but it's a red one. It's called Long Red Florence. So I've repeated myself to what I did with the normal onion seeds. Everything will be sound the same. A couple of onions seeds in each cell, and they're just covered up. For those of you who think you're a bit behind with the sewing, no need to worry. We had an absolute freezer last night. During the winter months, the greenhouse in the garden had become a bit of a dumping ground for anything that I couldn't find space to put it. So to make way for any potential seedlings that was germinating, I need to have a big clear out. As part of the greenhouse clear up, I've uh, emptied one of the hotbeds. This originally had uh, builder's sanding, which the weight was horrendous. Looking inside, you can see the yellow zigzagging cables that's heated and the big yellow rod, that's the rod thermostat which is controlled by this box here and uh, by turning the door it monitors the temperature and switches itself on and off as required. As I said this was originally filled with uh, building sand but now I'm going to be replacing this with uh, the vermiculite. I've tried to get it as close as I can to the entry point to where the cable comes in down the bottom. What I will do now is give this a light sprinkling with water just to firm it down again and then we'll place the soil cables and lay it out in its final position. found me outside which I never put up before. My daughter bought this for me for Father's Day, um, I think it was two years ago. The final sowings for this one is going to be a couple of varieties of leeks. Both of them I've never grown before and they're both from the same company called Robinson's. The first one is the pot leek. Uh, if you're not aware of what they are, the most short squat leek but they've got quite a lot of girth on them. And there's few on our side grown, and I've always intended to grow but never in the past, but I've got a pack of seeds now, so they're going in. And the second variety is Robinson's again, it's called the Blanche Leek. Again, I've never grown these, I usually grow my trusty favourite, is uh, Musselboro, but th this time I'm going to give these a go for the first sowings. They do have a quite a long stem on them, and hopefully I'll be able to get something decent. The compost I'm sowing them in is the 
F2 plus S Levington's with a bit of a Mickey light. So let's take a look at the weather, what it was doing in February. First of all, looking at the average minimum, again, the average for this month is two degrees. However, only six days reached the minimum average or above. Quite a few days I saw minus two or below, and towards the end of the month, it dropped to a chilly minus eight. Looking at the average maximum, as you can see, as the month progresses, the normal average rises from 6 to 7 degrees. We had a mixed bag with the daily highs reaching as high as 11 degrees. However, the best we saw at the end of the month was minus 2. Finally, let's take a look at the rainfall. During the month of February, we had 12 dry days. At the end of the first week, one day we had a downpour which totaled 8 millimetres. However, the total rain for the month was only 32 millimetres. With February well underway now, it's time to start looking at what potatoes we're going to grow. Potatoes are roughly divided into three main groups, which would be a first early, a second early, and these being the main crop. The main criteria of that is the length of time it takes them for maturity to harvesting. First early is usually 10 to 12 weeks, uh, second early is anything 12 to 14, 16 and main crop I work on 16 to 20 weeks usually go in the longer period so you get the bigger potatoes some of these actually lap over so you could use a first early and make it into a second second early can be done as a first obviously the earlier that you crop them the smaller the potatoes will be we're starting the potatoes off with a process called chitting which is not necessarily needed to grow the potatoes but what I find it does do is give you an early start knowing which way the sprouts are going to come out the spruts and then you can place the potato in the right orientation for the, the spruts to grow upwards. This variety I'm looking at here is Charlotte which will be one of my second earlies and uh, you can see already started cheating process with the number of spruts grown out the, number, the more number of spruits you have, the smaller the potato will be. So if you're looking for big potatoes, it's an idea to remove some of these. But as these are, I'll leave them as they are. And all I do is store them upright. In my case, it's a 24 cell seed tray. And then let them do their own thing. You want to keep them in plenty of light, but not let the frost get them. If there's not enough light, the spruts will come out thin and very pale colour which is not very good for growing. That's the first bag of potatoes put out for cheating and they've got some decent spruts already on them. I'll just run you through the three bags here that I've got which will be the varieties that I'm growing this season. First up is this one here, it's my first early and it's called Swift. This one does mature quite quickly and I shall be growing that in 30 litre tubs probably three to four potatoes in one tub. The second early, as we've already seen, is called Charlotte. That's a really good potato, lovely flavour, keeps well. I've got that bag there plus these here. Not sure if I'm going to be growing those yet in the ground or in tubs. We'll see a bit later on. And for the final main crop is my reliable favourite. It's the Soil Power Range, the Blight Resistant. And that one is the Sao Palmeira, one of the family. When the temperature does eventually warm up, the sap will start to rise and the buds will swell and then it's too late to get the pruning. So let's get going. You do need a good sharp pair of seconds when doing this and prune back with a slapping cut to an outward facing bud. So that's more or less done now. I've just got the, the other one down the bottom on the pear tree to do. One tree that you don't do this time of the year is the stone fruits such as the cherries and plums. Um, these tend to be done around the summer time because I think it brings in uh, silver leaf disease. But, for the thrifty gardeners out there, you could actually use these 
wedge them in the ground for growing the t traditional way for peas. However, be careful with what tree you are using the branches off. Don't ever use willow because you'll have them sprouting up in no time. And we've had some high winds overnight. Not much now, but it's left a few drifts around. Just going to call in the greenhouse now and have a look how the seedlings are doing. It's nice to have a walk on the fresh snow and it crunching under your feet. The light's fairly low in here because of the snow on the glass roof, so I don't know how this will turn out. Just having a look. They seem to be doing okay. The issue I've got in there now, as you can probably see at the back, is that the the onions have grown that tall at them pressing against the roof and bending over. So as a quick measure, I said already this is only a lash up to get me through this season. I will be building a new one later in the season in the autumn. Um, I'm going to build a little riser just to lift the top up. And that's just to give you an idea of how much now we've had over the last few days. Who would have thought this a week ago? It looks nice, but it does knock us back as gardeners because there's not a lot we can do. We can't work the soil. Luckily, we might have a few jobs in the greenhouse to get on with. It's not a perfect job, but it'll do the job and uh, give the plants another two or three weeks without meeting the reds. Today, we're going to sow some spring onions and the variety is a popular one called uh, White Lisbon. This is just a normal 12 cell tray and the compost is F2S with a bit of vermiculite added. The method I use is to put a depression in each little cell, sow about 8 to 10 seeds in each one and just let them grow. Then plant them out as a block about 6 or 8 inches apart and then you can harvest them just like a bunch of onions from the supermarket. Time to sow the tomatoes and this time we'll be sowing the Crimson Crush variety. You may recall last year that I grew these outside and had a fantastic crop. In fact, the tomato on the opening clip of the channel, that is a Crimson Crush. It does say on here that they are blight resistant, and just be clear that it is resistant and not blight free. These will still get blight in certain extreme cases, but most of the times they tend to fend it off. We're about to sow the cucumbers, and this is a variety I've never grown before called Telegraph Improved. With the seeds being so large, they're quite easy to space out, and that's all you get in the packet eight seeds. Okay. Some of the potatoes have a decent size in there. So, that's the middle bed all dug out now, and uh, there's the results. The swift potatoes have now got some decent sized sheets on them so I'm going to start the process of putting these into some buckets and getting them underway. I should be sowing the tubers in these 30 litre buckets. Two on the bottom layer, a few bit more compost than two on the top layer. And the compost that I'll be using is the B&Q Verve Multipurpose with added 6x manure. I've got about three inches of the soil mix now into the bottom of the bucket and I'll be putting the first two potatoes in. I always go diagonally opposite the handle so for the first two that shall be going in like that. This, this time we go in line with the handle. Pop it down there and that one there. And just put another two or three inches on top then leave them. These are the only onion sets I'm growing, and uh, these are a variety called Red Ray. I've never grown them before. I've actually chopped the bottom off, so I'll be starting mine off in ring culture. <laughs> Although the bottoms of the plants will, should touch the bottom, when I do come to plant them out into the soil, I'll just lifting that up will keep most of the roots intact and shouldn't cause too much disturbance. There is one more final ingredient to add to this mix for the onions, both the potting on the seedlings and also for the 
the headsets and that's this stuff here called charge it's fatal power really in it and what it does is it stimulates the root growth and uh, improves that so that's all the 45 planted up now all that's left is to give them a water in the seed sowing continues and today we're going to have a brassica fest for seed sowing seeds in rows of 12 and uh, I've already partitioned off and labelled each variety there so we just gently guide one seed heated propagator now and hopefully they should start germinating quite soon it is warm in here first and variety that I'll be sowing today is called a Calvedon Wonder this is a nice little pea this is you usually get a good crop off first one of the year for me normal normal rainwater guttering for us other peas in I do put drainage holes in mine because the first time I did this I didn't have no holes in I watered too much and the peas rotted the peas are just randomly scattered along the tray, no spacing at all, and left to their own devices. It's hard to believe that this time last week the allotment was covered in a blanket of snow. This drop of sunshine has brought the plants on tremendously, and as you can see, the crimson crush is starting to leap above the pot now and so I'm just starting to pot them on in individually into bigger pots so there they all potted up now surprisingly it's two packets of seeds average contents 10 I managed to get uh, 29 plants out I'm gonna spend the next hour or so potting up the brassicas I must admit to being quite pleased with the germination right on here they're like firm roots so give the soil a decent firming this is where we've got to so far, and I'm about two thirds of the way to potting them on. And I'll just explain my way of marking them so they don't get mixed up. Start by creating a list, then give each plant variety a unique number as it gets potted on. And then I just mark the pots. We can see that three is an Iron Man Calabrese, and number four is a Greyhound Cabbage. So let's take a look at the weather for March, starting off with the minimum temperatures. Midway through the month sees the average minimum temperature rising from 2 to 3 degrees. However, only 9 days would manage to reach past that. The month started off with a continuation of a cold snap plummeting down to minus 7 during the first day. All told, 11 days failed to reach past freezing. Looking at the maximum temperatures, March sees a four-step rise through the average daily temperatures ranging from a 7 up to 11 degrees throughout the month. The opening day could only manage minus 2 degrees though, but during the next few days past the average and reached a high of 14. Another brief cold snap during the middle of the month saw temperatures hitting zero again. This slowly increased during the month with a slight drop at the end. Finally, looking at the March rainfall, this saw a fair amount of rainfall within the six days, seeing five millimetres or more. The worst day was near the end of the month at 14 millimetres. The total rainfall for March was 95 millimetres. While we're still in the sowing mood, I've just fetched out the celery. This variety is my usual, it's called lay them self blanching. And what I do, I normally start them in a four inch pot Give them a light covering with vermiculite, then they go into the heated propagator. Then once they're up about three centimetres, I prick them out into individual cell trays and then they go out in the beds. So 
about it. I'll just give that a light mist in from the top and then that will go into the heated propagator.